this network. What is going on, Facebook and Battle Axe Global? This is the Bury the Needle podcast, episode 10, with our hosts, Oliver. What up, yo? And Rocco. And I am YT Rhymes. So what's going on, y'all? What's going on? Well, our 10th episode, and uh, you know the show, we talk about uh, shops, tattoos, which way the industry is going, what's new. And, uh, you know, and uh, we're interviewing artists that we, and my, myself personally, the artist that we're going to interview today, Phil Terrace, has been an artist at my shop eight years now. And to see him progressively grow uh, is amazing. He's an amazing artist. His meticulousness is amazing. Um, but I want him to explain to people, uh, of course, the respect behind being a tattoo artist, how it all started for him, uh, what he did, you know, his program of apprenticeship and all that stuff there. So uh, let's bring him on. Watsy Rhymes. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. There he is, a professor himself. Phil. This is Phil Terrace from East Van Wear and Tattoo Company. Phil, what's going on, man? Is his um his his speaker on? Yeah, he's not muted. Bill, he's trying to get it to work. Okay, looks like he's having some issues there. Call in using internet audio, Phil, if you don't have a mic. Do, 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 do. Oh, so it's connected. There we go. There, how's that? That's, That's good. Better. We can hear you now. There we go. Oh, look at you all sophisticated. <laughs> so, so Phil, I just tell everybody how you came across um, my tattoo shop. We've been there for eight years. So let everybody understand the program that you went through, how you got involved in tattooing. Of course, the respect behind tattooing and how it's changed. So basically, first of all, how'd you get involved? Uh, well, I was a slow starter getting into the tattoo industry. Um, always been into art ever since I was a little kid. Um, tried to pursue it, but other things in life kind of prevented that, um, as well as my own stubbornness. Uh, it actually took me getting uh, basically run down with addiction to uh, end up spending some time in jail before I really realized where I was going with art. Um, that's really all I did to like keep my sanity while I was in there was do art. And after a while, people kept telling me, why don't you do tattoos? You should do tattoos. And eventually I just, I tried it once and I was hooked and I've been doing it ever since. So I started out with a homemade machine did a couple tattoos on myself and then I did some on friends. Next thing I knew I had a lineup of people that wanted some work done and it just kind of went from there. And uh, the different uh, styles, like you've been tattooing how many years now? Um, tattooing in shop, just over 10 years. And I'd say I have about two years of practicing before that. And what apprenticeship program did you go through? Like, tell me how you learned to tattoo. Was there anybody there to give you some pointers? I mean, you're learning every day. You learn at your shop and everything, but the apprenticeship, apprenticeship idea program. Um, well, I never actually did a, a true apprenticeship. Um, my, my learning curve basically started as uh, being self-taught, um, trial and error. Um, after a while of that then i started really focusing on technique watching a lot of videos on youtube um watching other artists work asking questions um and just trying to constantly learn and try new techniques so you would say phil the best um answer to new artists when they understand 
first of all, the fundamentals, how we used to or how we do our apprenticeship program at the shop. We make them do the history, understand the history, where it all started and all that stuff there. But you're saying at the end of the day, if I did a program like what we teach in the shop, from there I should just learn the rest off Google, YouTube, uh, or is the best way in person with somebody? I, I think any resource that you can can find to help you hone your technique is very crucial and important to uh, becoming successful. And uh, you're going to learn like the good things to do and the bad things to do. Right. So it, it's a, a lot of self-guidance as well as a lot of paying attention to what others do and how, how they uh, go about doing their, their artwork. What do you think, Oliver, about that? Like, I mean, you're learning every fucking day. I mean, how long have you been tattooing for Oliver now? I've been tattooing in uh, September 21st. Uh, this year, 2021, will be 20 years. And you're learning every day? Um, I didn't know anything for the first 10 years. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've, learned more, I've learned more in the second 10 years of my tattooing or second nine years of my tattooing since I met Phil than I've learned like leaps and bounds like you know the tattoo industry is constantly evolving constantly changing the equipment's getting better the needles are getting better the furniture's getting better the lighting's getting better the, it just gets better and better there's there's no limits i have no idea where it's going but i'm excited to be part of it and it's cool and yeah yeah well i'm just saying at the end of the day stuff is getting better and better and all that stuff right but yeah, you got to pay attention and learn from other people. You got to pay attention to where the what's going on and what what is the new thing. What is the new printer? What are guys using? Are pigments getting better with one brand rather than another brand? You know who's who's putting out the highest. Who's paying attention to the longevity of a tattoo? Because I think that that's something that people aren't paying attention to. People stack their portfolio, and that's something I would really want to credit Phil with. Is you know he pays attention to. How much is enough detail? How much is too much? You know, you got to have some tattoos got to last too, right? right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, if we have, we have some of Phil's artwork. Let's put it up. Please, uh, Trevor, if you can, well, we're sitting here chatting too, so people understand what we're talking about. I mean, tattooing in Canada is a different, uh, different, uh, how do you say, it, uh, path than anywhere else. Like you can't compare when it's, there's a hot area towards a cold area because there's more color being done in the cold area than there is any hot areas. I mean, yeah. sure, there's color being done. Like I'm saying, like, for example, we went down to LA or something, you see a lot of Chicano black and grays, you know, gray wash because the sun and everything. And besides the end of the day, I think Canada prevails along with Europe when it comes to putting in color. There's also artists all over the place that are very good artists, but you see more coming out of Canada. You see more coming out of Europe. Um, you know, it's just, these are the ones that are noticing that I notice the most myself. Um, so, so like, how does how does temperature affect a tattoo? Well, when Let's the sun beats that. down, your, when the sun beats down your tattoo all day long, think about it, right? Yep. You know, like what what happens when you uh, what happens when you have certain colors there, Phil and Oliver? Like that, some of them turn green, right? Like, well, yeah. the, the newer inks nowadays are definitely formulated a lot better than they were, like say ten years ago. Um, and definitely don't fade as much, but you still have to take care of your tattoos. You still have to protect them from UV. Um, if you're going to spend a lot of time in the sun, it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of sunblock on just yeah. to protect the vibrancy of your tattoo. Yeah. Hey, but I'm just saying, I guess it goes, the, basically the way the style rolls is where the area is. I mean, a lot of people follow the leaders. You know what I'm saying? So when you go down, like when we went down to um, Los Angeles for Horioshi the Three Eats Me West um, uh, tattoo show, we're showing off the brand. And also uh, we had uh, six Yakuda from Japan and six Cholos from East LA. We all met at the Known Gallery and we had this big event and everything. But you should have seen some of the work. We went to a taco stand and we had some lunch. And these guys, man, like, Full leg, AK-47, uh, the Marona, big money rolls. You know, it was a lot of a lot of, of space for one piece. And it was just... I all... love that style. And I love that our industry is moving into that. People are getting large-scale tattoos. They're, you know, we're just... It's the same content that we've seen over the last 10 years, except people are like, yo, I want this to be big. As where it used to be a face we would do it'd be four or five inches. Now it's like, no, I want my upper arm done as one face with a claw. 
Right. I mean, Phil, you're pulling off a lot of gray work also. I mean, Trevor's going to put some up, but what's your favorite uh, style that you like doing? Because I see that you're pretty damn good at everything, brother. Um, I, I honestly, it's hard for me to pick a favorite. I love all styles of tattooing. Um, my go-to is definitely black and gray animal portraits. I love doing those. Um, and I really love doing like colorful Japanese stuff. It's like just beautiful work. Yeah, you kill it out there, man. I tell you, you know, when I was um, down in that lake, I was telling you that, uh, you know, the, 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 for the, the show that we did with East News West, you know, I, we, Jack Rudy, Good Time Charlie, Negretti, I mean, and uh, Mark Mahoney, like they say, these are the first guys that brought the black and gray style back in, you know, 70, 71 era to the streets because it was all done in jail before, right? So, I mean, it's nice to see where certain things are born in certain areas, right? And what's given the drive to certain visions. But I'm saying every artist in my eyes, uh, being involved in the tattoo business for you know, me, my brother, my in our family over 20 years now, like I say to people, we consult, we own shops, but we're also collectors. I'm holding one, 82 artists on my canvas now. Um, but at the end of the day, every artist has their own style. There's not two artists the same, I think. Uh, sure, people can do the same same tattoo but you know you're gonna see a difference in them it doesn't matter right but like i said phil your 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 uh tattooing every angle you do is amazing you know and thank you very much oh my pleasure brother and you guys also know that the absolute underground magazine coming out uh next time is gonna have a spread about phil terrison also uh that's my friend ira from uh, absolute underground we've been being involved in that uh, magazine for the last year and a half it's something that's not uh, owned by a big corporation. It's a mom and pop business, and we support mom and pop businesses over here in Vancouver, East Van, BC. Ollie, look at that smile. Only a fucking mother can love. <laughs> I love how you coordinate, Oliver. Like, you're all orange today. You're all Hardy Davidson, bro. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Fuck, he's quiet. Oh, yeah. We're, we're crushing it up here, man. I'm getting, I got a couple of days off coming up here. I just want to talk about Phil a little bit more. You know, yeah. Phil, I met Phil 10 years ago when he was wet behind the ears. And man, <laughs> yeah. he was hungry for it. And uh, he just came in and he was honest at the tattoo shop that I worked at. He wasn't trying to blow smoke up our ass or trying to tell us something that wasn't true. And, you know, and we just said, yeah, go. And I just watch you grow and grow and grow, Phil. And, just, you know what, man, you are a perfect example of longevity and loyalty and old school principles in the tattoo business. And I'm proud of you, bro. You just rocked it out. And uh, to see you work with Rocco for so many years makes me so proud to get to be a part of that story and your story and get to work with you at conventions, bro. And just who would have thought, you know, it's, it's been a great trip, man, for sure. And honestly, I have you to thank uh, a lot for uh, getting me to where I'm at because if it wasn't for me hounding the hell out of you when I first started at that shop you you wouldn't have told the the owner of the shop like hey give this guy a chance so uh, yeah. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for that man my pleasure bro and I, it's so cool to see you work with Rocco and you know so many it was cool to see the season where Jimbo came and worked alongside you guys and it's you know Jimbo we have a legacy, man, and, and you know, and I, that's why I always tell the people that come and go or, you know, even working with Claire, like, in the rearview mirror, I still work with my ex, and I let her know, like, remember, when you're a boss, you got to you gotta remember that people come and go, and there's only going to be a very few handful of people that stick around and, you know, are your ride or dies and fill you or a stick around, the ride or die tattoo artist, and I love knowing you, bro. Appreciate that, man. You're like a brother to me, so appreciate knowing you. Yeah. Hey, uh, YT, we got any more we can put up? Yeah, I'm just working on it right now. What piece that Phil's working on right now? This was is this one complete now, Phil? This one is complete. Yes. That was the last one you see? It's red. Is the last part he worked on? You know, it's that part. But well, yeah. Was, red. How, many, how many sessions was this one here, Phil? Uh, we did this one in five sessions. And an hours per. Uh, it was roughly around four hours per sure. session. So about 16 hours. <coughs> yeah, 16 to 20 hours. That's quick. 
Yeah, that one was just done. What uh, that was done prior to yesterday. You did. Someone came in wanted uh, the block idea for their kid's name. Nice, clean, crisp. You see the colors in behind there also. Yeah, yeah. this one was done a few years ago. Uh, yeah. That was a lot of fun to do. Yeah, that's uh, that was on. Uh, what's your name? Uh, what's your name's daughter? Right, the kid skateboarder. Um, yes. Uh, what's the mom's name? Fuck, beautiful lady. This one I love. Yeah, that one's really nice. This one was bang on. You should have seen the, the picture. It was bang on, I tell you. Tell us, tell us more about this one, Phil. Uh, well, this was a memorial tattoo for their uh, their lost pet. Yep. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was actually my first, like, color pet portrait. Um, I was super excited to do it, and I just really wanted to put as much detail and try to capture as much of the expression as I could of the the dog and i think i did a good job of it they were really happy with it and yeah it's one of the ones i'm most proud of for sure beautiful tattoo that's incredible now what's the story behind this one and this one here well this was uh a couple of photos from the client of his girl actually and he wanted to incorporate them do something a little bit abstract and a little bit kind of in the trash polka style and this was the direction i took it kind of just based off of his ideas and i think it turned out really cool it was a lot of fun and yeah. i i really enjoy doing this kind of style of, of work yeah they killed this one brother yeah sick man yep I mean that's our that's our pictures that we have for phil's work was right there, yeah. I just, sent, uh, I just sent you a short video, Whitey, of um, the one I just worked on today. I'm almost closing this one out coming up here. I got 20 plus hours into this. So, tell me some. What do you think of um, well, because we've seen them come and seen them go here. Can you email it to me? Your opinion on the respect yeah. towards tattoo right now, like new, new artists or dot com. Um, I think it's hit and miss. Honestly, there's there's a lot of people out there who think, oh, I can do this. It's it's easy money. It's uh, just quick and easy to go. But it, it's not. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of uh, dealing with different personalities and different peoples and their their ideas and trying to be able to balance that for a nice tattoo as well as like keeping the clients like really happy with their decisions. Right. Some people are are real quick to just be like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll tattoo anything you want. And then, but they don't really care about what the, the client is going to think like five years down the road or 10 years down the road. Um, so I think it's really important that uh, people keep that in mind when they're dealing with customers that uh, this person's got to wear this piece of art for the rest of their life. So do you want to be proud of that? Or do you want them to potentially like, be unhappy with their decision later on and then it all comes down on you and the shop you work on right that's right i mean a lot of artists don't see outside the box and they're sitting there like whatever just get the money in my pocket and that's it um i i see some tattoos where i've um you know like when i go out i see tattoos i look at these tattoos and i'm like well like because tattooing now is so mainstream people are just getting them to make themselves look either fucking big or bad or it's part of the fashion industry now but what are you thinking about? You know, like I see some tattoos. I'm like, what the fuck are you thinking about? You know, they'll just get anything that they think might look cool, but it doesn't even suit them. It doesn't even go with them. You know what I'm saying? It's all about yeah. balancing your tattoos to match what you're about, right? But, you know. But I just yeah, think it's, it's even, it's like a client I had uh, recently who he wanted a certain tattoo and he wanted it in a certain spot. But then when I explained to him like that spot, it, like because he was planning on expanding in his tattoos later on and i explained to him like well if you put a tattoo in that spot it's going to really interrupt the flow of everything else that you have yep. so maybe you might want to move it to a different spot and when he understood that he was totally cool with it and afterwards he was like man thanks for talking me into moving the tattoo because i'm really happy with it now uh, and i think that's really important like to to really like help educate your clients on on it because they don't think in the now sometimes or the later like they just think okay i just want this i want it now and i don't care You're right so it, it's really important to uh 
make sure that your client is getting exactly what they want, but in, in a way that's going to be pleasing for them forever. Right. Right. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of what you don't get from some artists. I mean, at the end of the day, you're there for when someone gets inked by, you got to remember some, they're going to say, where'd you get that tattoo? from?" Oh, Phil Terrace. Wow. That's free marketing right there. So, I mean, yeah. just think before you ink, right? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. we've had our clients here that fucking, I love, I love when, when Phil meets up with a console with a fucking person because it's either gone good or it's gone like, what the fuck? <laughs> Those guys' <laughs> moments, I tell you, I tell you. But, you know, what, uh, so what do you think, Phil, with COVID and everything? Is it a better way of running the shop? Just person to person, I think, and nobody's sitting around watching the tattoo and, Definitely. Yeah, it, it's more organized and it's definitely uh, like a lot calmer environment around the shop. There's not so much chaos of people coming in and out or people trying to hold your client's hand and stuff yeah. like that. Like it, it, it is a lot better in that aspect. Yeah, we're not doing walk-ins, uh, you know, like to sit down and talk to somebody about an idea that they thought they had when you walked the door and then they want to talk about it for the next two hours. And all of a sudden you're sitting down and you're doing something that might take 30, 40 minutes, but it's taking an hour and a half to prepare another hour to listen to. And then you sit down yeah. a, a bill and you're like, well, it only took 35 minutes, you know? So yeah, no, like, it's, it's a lot easier to really focus on the projects that you have on, yeah. on the table and not have any side distractions or anything either too so it is definitely like on top of the whole like the safety of our clients and ourselves in the shop as well right like it, it just it cuts down on all the traffic and all the the chances of any of the covid bullshit going on right so have an asian spray because there's not by anybody touching anything you know yeah Less people in the room. I mean, I like the shop the way it's being run too because it's tattooing clients, consulting clients. Come on down. What else do you want to do? Right? I mean, we don't need five people back here holding someone's hand. Yeah. I know it was a, it's a nice thing when a mother, a daughter, or the first tattoo is happening. But I mean, you got to understand some that there is disease in the air. And I mean, our shop, you know, our shop, so we can get off the fucking floor. We don't have a five second rule on our floor. We have a fucking a one week uh, rule. If you leave something for there for a week, you'll still be fine to eat. That's all fucking thing. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. But that's the way we run shops. That's why we have who we have at our shop. We have a really good team down here. Everybody works together. And if someone can't hit it, they always pass it on. Look, I gotta, I gotta go. Can you make sure that gets wiped down? And we work together as a team. It's not yeah. about whose job it is. It's everybody's job here, and that's great. And like I say, at the end of the day, Phil. So, I consider you one of our best artists down here, but everybody is great in their own style. But when it comes down to meticulism and everything else, you know, hands down, you know what I'm saying? It's you're, you're, it's I'm honored to have you at my shop. It's been great growing with you at the shop. And we got our convention hopefully coming up in 2022 where we can get ourselves and spread our fucking wings a little bit and breathe again. You know I'm saying? so excited for that. I can't wait. It's going to be a good show. Uh, 2022. At the Courageous Cultural Center, the East Van Tattoo Show. It'll so, be our first year that we're going on three years of try. Twenty twenty one is a write off again, Rock. Yeah. What's that? Twenty twenty one's a write off. Yeah. Oh yeah, this year's a write off. I'm, I wouldn't even try. I don't. Even, I wouldn't even try. No. I don't want to. I don't want to be behind so many like maybe's. I don't want to hear yeah. no maybe's. I want to hear yeah, you could do this. Yeah, you got to do this. You know, maybe, maybe we'll see. Yeah. They're, saying, they're saying July is when we're supposed to maybe, right? I don't want to hear that. I want to see come December, Merry Christmas, everybody go to each other's house again. Let's 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 pass on that fucking fruit cake that I've been hanging on to for the past two years and pass it on to someone else. I don't have somebody, right? Scotch. I don't think it gets better with age, buddy. Oh fuck! I tell you guys, man, this fucking um, you know, like I told everybody, you know, I lost a girlfriend of mine uh, yesterday, and I tell you something: the world is uh, is a really, it's a really confusing place to live right now. I just tell everybody right now: don't don't take time to hate. Take time to appreciate what you got. Take That's love right. life the way it is. Appreciate your friends. People don't understand why I don't talk to them because you know what? If you got nothing but bad energy, I just block you. Great phones. I love That's these that, people, bro. Preach. Or I get rid of you. You know what I'm saying? Because I just don't need to babysit people. Sorry, Oliver. We ain't got time for that, man. Negative energy gets no airtime. No time, man. I ain't got time for it. You know what I mean? Fuck it. Just life's too short, man. I tell you, life's too short. Enjoy it. 
Remember, son, we're living in hell. There's only one way to go. Yeah. All right? There's fucking hell. But, Phil, you want to add anything to this tattoo world? I mean, I know when you first uh, came to the shop behind me, we had three fucking light tables. I mean, the way yeah. you got now with the fucking iPads and everything, you like that a whole lot better. Uh, I love the iPad. It's it's like such an amazing tool for our for our industry. Um, just the the ability to have like a Photoshop like program like at your fingertips and just so easy to use Better. and easy to help people's designs like come together. It, it's an amazing tool. Yeah. You two, Oliver, you say you say the same all. I think that it's definitely like to have it where you can like Phil remembers when I had my Wacom tablet and I paid $5,000 to have Mm -hmm. a a Photoshop with a screen and a pen. Like I was on the front end of that. It was big money. So to have it available to anybody for 1500 bucks is pretty cool, man. So I just want to pipe in and give a quick shout out to our Facebook supporters. We got, uh, Eston's tuning in. We got Mike Cook. We got Vincent Schleider and Susan, who's always with us. Pink A. Oh. And then on our Battle Axe Global, we got Jeremy Fortin and Willie P have joined us on the Battle Axe Global page. What is going on, everybody? Thanks for joining us. So, yeah, the iPad streamlines everything. I, I You know, I'm a firm believer. If you can't do it on paper with the pen and the pencil, the iPad's not going to do anything different. You still got to be able to draw. It's not going to make you yeah. be able to draw. So it's just a digital piece of paper and pencil. So it just really streamlines, like you said, Rocco. It streamlines, gets rid of the light tables and the tracing paper and the pencil crayons and the fucking pencil sharpener and the razor. Like it just takes everything into this nice, neat little package. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing for that. Like, it's just, it, it's literally eliminated all my sketchbooks and all my pens and paper and, like, anything that's, like, messy is, like, no longer there. It's just super easy. You can take it anywhere. Yeah, as as like long as you can plug it in, that's, like, that's the only thing. <laughs> drawing, you know, just, like, drawing at home or wherever is always used to be, like, a setup and get, do get it all ready, get your cups of water out and... Do you know what I yeah. mean? Airbrush, you need to get the compressor plugged in and the fucking paint mixed up. And like, yeah, no, you don't even have to do that with this thing. You press a button and you have an airbrush. You <laughs> press a button and you have watercolor. Like, it, it's just awesome. Yeah. Oh, I see it now. It's like, fuck, I mean, it's a sad thing. When I first opened up my second shop here, our third shop in the family, actually, our fourth shop in the family business, but the back room was all. Bzzz. <laughs> oh, it's like fucking when I walk in, goes anybody tattooing, and everybody's tattooing, but it's everything's rotor now, right? So yeah, yeah. I, I miss the, the sound machine. so much. But hey, but so you gotta admit, and all you gotta admit, the rotor machine is easier to pack the color in. Well, it, it is very better. efficient. Yeah, it's best better in every regard. If it wasn't, if the coil machine or there was another machine that did a better job, people like me and Phil would be using it. Yeah, because we just want to do what does the best job is the most efficient is the cleanest that there's many aspects of tattooing is it sanitary is it easy to wrap is it easy to clean is it easy to break down and set up is it easy to maintenance do you know what i mean what's the cost of the needles that go in it how much stuff am i throwing away so in there's every less time- and there's less stretching involved when you're stretching the skin is it easier to stretch no, i don't think it's any different in that regard i think yeah that the it's, needles- it's no different I think the needles have gotten a lot better in that way that, you know, you could get right down into these crazy number eight bug pins now. And, you know, it's like the needles are so fine. There's three human hairs. Yeah. The, the things that you can do in a tattoo nowadays, it's unbelievable. And a lot of it is just because of the, the equipment that is available to us. Like it's precision equipment and uh, it's literally like after you've, use it a little bit and you've gotten to know it you just pick up new tricks here and there and then like like i said before watching other artists like you just you pick up things real quick and then with the new uh, equipment that's out there nowadays it just makes it that much easier did you get those photos i sent you put those crazy tattoos yeah i see it myself uh you know just watching the artists and everything and but honestly the line work quell machine still rocks or nothing. 
Well, there's guys that was the thing with the coil machine is that I think that when you're learning to tattoo, it's good because it's got a little bit more weight to it. You get a little bit more line control and stability. And also it's that weight makes it like you were saying, rock people think that, you know, that it does better line work. But I, in my opinion, that's just because the machine actually physically weighs more. So yeah. you're, you're pressing mm-hmm. a little bit. It's pressing a little bit harder. Just not even if you weren't to press at all, when the machine weighs three or four times what a rotary machine weighs now, it's going to appear to do better line work because it's got some punch behind it, man. Yeah. yeah, I think I think some of it, too, is patience, like where like with a coil machine, you're going a little bit slower, too. Right. Yeah. And you, you kind of like to get those nice crispy lines with the with the pen machine. You almost got to go just a touch slower. You got to press. Like, you got to get behind too. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, you can still get just as crispy lines with a a rotary pen machine than you can with a coil machine. So So it's just just what you're comfortable with. Comfortable with. Fuck, I tell you, man, what a change. I got a whole fucking case full of fucking coil machines, man. I tell you some and, you know, some gifts also, but. I did my three fucking crosses with coil machines. I tried on three clients. I'll never tattoo another person again unless I hate the person and I want to tattoo their foreheads and stuff like that. But like I said, I'll remove something without lasering. I'll just cover it up my way. But at the end of the day, you know, um, yeah, it's just, it's amazing the the, the different equipment that uh, artists have. It's just changed so much. And sometimes I feel like we're losing the fucking respect behind the fucking industry, Phil. You know me, I'm always complaining about something, right? Yeah. Like the artists come along, they, they pass our class, they do a few months of tattooing, and all of a sudden they don't ask no more questions, and what happens? The color's falling out. You know what I'm saying? Well, the lines don't hold, because they think they know everything. I feel the respect is gone in this fucking industry when it comes to new artists. I think learn and understand, you know, until, you know, you, you got it on point, man. I mean... It's never, never be embarrassed to ask a question about learning how to do something the right way. I always said to myself, and I've always done that. So we never. have uh, on the Battle Axe Global Live page, we have, I, I believe it's Mawifa. She says that things have definitely come a long way for sure. Lots more Wifa. oils. That's, 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 uh, that's Black Sox, isn't it? What? Is it Mawifa? Yeah, Mawifa. That's Black Sox from fucking Utah. How you doing, brother? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's Black Sox. He's actually a piercer and tattoo artist. Cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's changed, you know. It's changed. And I'm glad to see you on, brother. Yeah, and I would love to talk to you soon, brother. Um, yeah, it's changed, you know. It's it's a different industry. It just, it just blows me away how, you know, when someone came in, the artist would sit there and draw. And nowadays it's like Phil says, right? Pa, ta, 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 How's yeah. that? Let's let oh, and it print. Yeah. It goes to my fucking popper machine, throw it to the fucking thermo, and let's that's it on. You should see the new printer I got, Rocco. It's actually an inkjet that the you fill it up with ink, but instead of filling it up with black, red, blue, and uh yellow, you put the purple ink solution into the printer. And it prints a fucking pattern right on paper. Okay, Shaq. <laughs> that, that's awesome. That, that's an amazing, amazing feature to have. Yeah, and then Jason, Jason Jenkins says, uh, getting tattooed 20 years ago hurts more, I feel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, don't worry, Jason. We got nummy cream now, brother. For all that, the old photo up. Yeah, I'm working on it. He's trying here. This guy has been sitting like a champion for, did he get it? Yeah. Oh, 20 hours plus. Let me see. So, Ollie, this new printer that you have, do you do you have to use special paper with it? Yeah, I haven't got good. But you have to use like thick tracing paper because the thin stuff seems to just get gobbled up by the thing. And then so the normal plain paper that we've been using seems to absorb a little bit too much of that stencil ink. So yeah. I've, got to find a, I've got to find a good paper that's the same as the transfer paper, but just thicker. Yeah. So I'm just getting that dialed in still. It's a little bit of a nightmare. So what we got going on here? Explain the story, Ollie. I don't know. This guy's a nurse, and I've been working on this ta- this sleeve for a year. We did all the hexagons last sitting. It was four hours. 
And then we just did all the red insides today. It's another three hours. And then we have 15, probably 15 hours on the outer. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Oh, I see where it is. It's armor plating on the outside yeah. and then all organic hexagons on the inside. Well, YT, Ollie, yep. and Phil got our 45 minutes in of, ta of tattoo information, tattoo talk. Hey, Phil, thanks a lot for your time. Yes. Everybody, thanks grab for having me. I'm oh, super God, proud of you, bro. Uh, keep it going, Phil. Keep it humble, brother. Keep it respectful. Keep it loyal. Keep it honorable. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, there's not too many uh, old school ways left. And, uh, you know, you guys know that I meet up with John the Dutchman every Monday for breakfast. And I tell you, the way things are changing, he don't like it either. But what are you going to do? I told him, you know, this is how it goes nowadays, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that was episode 10 of the Bury the Needle podcast. I am YT Rhymes with my co-hosts, Oliver and Rocco. And we had our special guest, Phil Terrace, from East Van Ware and Tattoo Company. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, You're welcome, for, Phil. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, YT. I'll see you guys in a couple hours on uh, Open Mic. Yes, All right, man. join us at 5 p.m. for Axes Up. Peace out, y'all. Peace from out. From Divine Peace. Terrace, Peace. B.C. It's F this. Fuck this.